Hey guys, it's Mrs. Reyes. I'm on the internet! So, here I am in my studio at home. I hope all of you guys are safe and cozy and warm. I know that this is a really confusing time for everybody. I promise I won't stare into the camera and like look into your soul. I promise. I'm gonna look off camera sometime. I know that everything is kind of confusing right now and that you guys probably have a lot going on. Um, so that being said, we're going to be doing weekly assignments for now and I know that we're gonna be we're not working with the same programs that we were working with in the computer lab. So I just want you guys to do your best. I still want you guys to get the same amount of knowledge out of the materials that we have that you would if we were in the computer lab. So we are going to be using alternate resources and free programs that are online. The one that we're going to start learning first is called Sketch.io. It is a program that's very similar to Illustrator. In this video, I'm going to be doing a demonstration of how to use Sketch.io in order to recreate the same project that we left off with when we were in the classroom, which was the uh, four boxes, the four parts of color. So please make sure that you follow this video. If you have not seen my last post, my last post was talking about how to get to Sketch.io. So please look at that link first and then look at this one. And in this video, I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to do the project. I know we, some of you might have started it already. If you have your flash drive and you have access to everything that you need at home, great. But if you don't, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. You guys are going to have some time to work on this project. Okay, so here we go. Okay, you guys. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open the Sketch.io app. Once you have it open, you should be at a blank page like this. On the top, you have your arrow that you can use to move everything. Then you have your customized size settings. You have your tools, your shape tool, stickers, text, and paint bucket. So I'm going to the shape tool, choosing rectangle. And then on the fill, I'm going to a solid color. And I'm going to change that to a primary color. So I'm choosing red. Then I'm going to click on my screen and drag to make a big red rectangle. You should be able to see these icons on the corners that let you click and drag to change the size of your rectangle. Now, in order to choose the right colors, we need to be able to understand our color wheel. So you guys should remember me talking about this in class. So looking at the color wheel, we see that we have the four different parts of color here if you're a member from class. It's arranged in a wheel so that you can understand how the different colors relate to each other. So the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Those are the colors that make up everything. The secondary are orange, violet, and green. And then in between you have the blue violets, the red violets, the red oranges, and those are the intermediate colors. Opposite colors are colors that are opposite on the color wheel like yellow, green, and red, violet, orange, and blue, and so on and so forth. So, going back to the app, in the stickers panel, you have different options for stickers, but if you go to the bottom left plus icon, on the top right, we have the import button. Um, so you can put in any images that you download off of Google. So I'm just going to look for the SpongeBob that I downloaded to use for my first box. Okay, great. Now that I have SpongeBob, you'll see that I'm able to move him around with my cursor. Um, you also have different copy and paste options on the top. And if you click on that icon, you can choose different stickers and play with the opacity. Remember, opacity is the thickness or the translucency of an object on a layer. But if you don't want to download something, you can just choose a different sticker icon and trace that as well. Try to make sure it's something that we can see. Uh, the shape of and understand what it is by just the shape. Um, I'm, I, I'm just working over Spongebob right now. If you wanted to do that, that's easier for you. I'm putting a rectangle on top and then lowering the opacity of that rectangle to be able to see through to my Spongebob. If you get stuck at any time, you can go on to Google and search up how to edit things in Sketch.io. If you go on to Sketch.io, they actually have videos that will show you how to do different things in case you get stuck. I know I'm not there with you guys to be able to 
help you one-on-one, -on -one, but I will be happy to video chat with you if you're stuck on anything at any time. But always remember you can go back to this website. They have different things such as how to make paths, how to make segments. If you're not sure how to do something, check out their uh, tutorials that they have online and maybe that'll answer your questions better. For example, the tutorial that we have here is on how to make paths and points curve, which we are going to be using a lot for the assignment that you're about to do. So if at any time you're not sure how to make it look like the curve you want, you can go back here. So going back to my tools, I'm going to the path tool, not the line tool, because the path tool allows me to pull curves into different directions so that I can make the corners and edges look rounded just like what's happening on Spongebob. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to click around my Spongebob picture and curving it to the different parts of his body. Just keep in mind it's easier to go back to the last place that you clicked and edit that curve instead of going back at the end and editing all your curves like we would have in Illustrator. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep going around Spongebob until I'm done. So if at any time you make a mistake, on the top right we do have a layers panel. Every time you click something, it makes a new layer. So you can actually go back to that layer and click it and delete it just pressing the delete button and you should be able to undo anything that you've done. Another thing that might be easier for you is to do it in sections instead of doing the entire character at once. So I'm just kind of going back and doing the entire outline of Spongebob's body and then I'm going to do a separate outline for each of his uh, arms and legs. As you see, another way of curving is by holding down the curve tool as after you first click and then you should be able to make the adjustments accordingly. Here you're going to see that I'm going to finish up his body and then I'm just going to start working on his arm as an entirely separate piece. Remember that when you finish a shape you have to click back on the first point that you clicked in order for the shape to be an entire separate piece. If you click somewhere else it will continue the shape and that's how you'll get the different jagged edges like I did before when I was working on his body. All right, great. So now that I've got the different parts of SpongeBob, I'm going to raise back the opacity. So I'm going to go to my layers panel and increase the percentage on the fill. So I'm just going to do that one by one um, until I get an entire silhouette of SpongeBob. After I've got SpongeBob silhouette, now I can go back to my original background rectangle and make that um, at 100% opacity. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can actually create earbuds and an iPad or an, an Apple device in order for your character to be listening to because remember we were referencing the original iPod ads. So I'm going to the pen tool, increasing the fill and outline to white and I'm just kind of drawing with my mouse. Um, and then afterwards I'm going to connect those earbuds to make it look like he's actually listening to an Apple iPod. So I'm going to the rectangle tool, making it white, I'm making the base shape for in his hand to make it look like he's listening to an iPod. And then the iPods, if you Google iPods, if you've ever used one before, you know that it has a little square and then it has a little circle button where you can scroll and um, change your music. Wow, this is like really old. We're talking like 2005 here. So I'm making a gray circle for the middle and then another gray circle to show the music selection. And then I'm going back to my pen tool, and this time in order to make sure that it's just a line, I'm going to change the um, fill to zero, because with the fill at 100, it's thinking that I'm drawing shapes, but I'm not drawing shapes, I'm drawing a line. So you're keeping the outline at 100, 
and the fill to zero and that'll allow you to draw different shapes. If you don't like what you drew, you can always go back to your layers panel, click on the last pen that you drew because remember everything you draw or create makes a new layer. Just delete it and redraw. When it's time to save, you're going to go to the bottom where it says export and then you're going to hit download. When you hit download, you'll see the JPEG option. Please save it as a JPEG. You can keep it at 72 DPI. Regular scale is fine. And size at one time size is totally fine. Hit download and then it should be saved into your pictures, documents, or downloads in your Chromebook. All right, awesome. When you are ready, you can submit this into Google Classroom. I hope that this tutorial was extremely helpful. And remember, if you guys have any questions, you can always send me an email, leave a comment below, and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, guys, have a great time and enjoy your graphic design.